Uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, Herman Kelly is my name, uh, press officer for the EFDD. I would like to introduce the issue, raise the issue uh, today about the voting uh, system and how it has worked very undemocratically in the, the Parliament in the elections of two weeks ago. I would like to introduce um, co-president of the EFDD group, uh, David Borelli, here on, the, on my right. And to the left, in the absence of Mr. Farage, who is speaking at the moment in the Parliament, Mr. Roger Helmer, who is head of delegation for the UK Independence Party. So, uh, any questions, uh, queries? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I'm a journalist and I write about pensions legislation, which is a very technical subject. We've got something like in the life insurance side in the EU, something like um, 8 trillion euros under management. And on the occupational side, we've got four, making a total 12, about the same as the uh, total EU GDP. And... Uh, Yes, I, uh, this is a press conference to do with the voting system for the committee chair, so we can't take any other questions about other issues. I'm sorry about that. Any, any other, please, to do with the committee? Yes, the back. Uh, Vista, Dario, is it? The famous? Uh, sí, Albert. Albert, sorry. Uh, um, the Agency of Alliance in Italian. You talked about... Uh... Now, you're talking about a breakdown of democracy, but in actual fact, the vote was technically speaking democratic. They decided not to give you any official posts, and that was backed by a majority. So why are you annoyed with that? Now, it was the same risk that uh, the Cinque Stella was running by joining ranks with Farage. Weren't you aware of that? Democracy. Now, you're saying it's democratic. I'm not sure about that. Uh, I don't agree with the fact even that it was technically democratic because there is a general habit according to which in this parliament the smaller groups and minority groups should still be represented within some of the committees. So there is a custom in this parliament and obviously it won't be the most important one such as the budget committee for example but it should be possible for these smaller minority groups to make their voice heard and for there to be an opposition in this parliament. And if this is the democracy of this parli parliament, then my concept of democracy is a different one because this, these elections have basically tried to sideline a group that people don't like. Yeah, if I, can, if I can just add to that, the, the custom and practice which has been long established, and I've been in the Parliament for 15 years, is that the de Hont system is applied so that uh, um, committee uh, chairmanships and indeed the vice presidencies of the Parliament uh, are in some sense representative. Uh, now, the European institutions, in my experience, are characterized by a vast contempt for the voters. That is best illustrated, in fact, by the reaction to the successive referenda in different countries, uh, where you have what I like to call biased finality. If you get the wrong answer from the institution's point of view, you're simply told to keep voting and voting and voting until you get the right answer. When you get the right answer, the matter is closed. So you have the, uh, the Danes, the Irish, who voted against uh, European propositions and have simply been told to go away and get it right and vote again. Uh, you had the French and the Dutch who, who very wisely voted uh, against the European Constitution. Uh, they didn't tell them to vote again. They simply uh, changed the title of the document from a constitution to a Lisbon Treaty and said we don't need uh, to have a referendum now. But the Irish had to vote on it under their own national constitution. They got the wrong answer. They were told to go away and vote again. So the institutions have a contempt for the voters. Now in my country, the UK, my party, the 
the United Kingdom Independence Party was by far the largest share of the vote in the European elections and we have the largest UK dele MEP delegation in Brussels. Uh, in the case of our colleagues, the Five Star Movement, they also got a very substantial share of the vote uh, in Italy and have a large delegation here in, in, uh, in Strasbourg and Brussels. Um, now, what it amounts to is that all those millions of voters who voted for parties that take a Euro-critical stance have simply been sidelined and ignored, and this is a determined effort by the larger groups behind closed doors to have an exclusion policy where alternative views are not listened to. That is not democratic. What is more, it is dangerous, because if the people come to recognize that their so-called democratic institutions have no place for dissenting opinions, they will look for alternative ways of expressing themselves. Microphone, please. Could you tell me? David, Veneto region. David from the Veneto region. Del Veneto, di casa di David Borelli. Volevo chiedere. In the same group as David Borelli, I'd like to ask you why did the Five Star Movement, which is Eurosceptic movement, join an alliance with Farage and not with the other Eurosceptics such as Marine Le Pen and the Lega Nord, the Northern League. Marine, Marine Le Pen has told me personally that she's against NATO and she wants to have an alliance with Russia. And the Northern League would also like to exit NATO. Your movement, Five Star Movement, is a little bit closer on Anglo-American positions, even though you're Eurosceptic. We decided to join the EFD because that's what our voters online decided. We looked at all the different options. Obviously, I'm talking about feasible options and proposals that could really be put on the table. We didn't pay any attention to corridor rumors because they're simply not realistic. What we did was looked at what was realistic and put that up for a vote online. Our positions are clear. We're against this type of Europe. We're against this kind of management done in this way. And that's why we decided to use an online vote in deciding to join the EFD or the ECR or a mixed group. Now, our voters came up with a decision and we went along with that. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that the fact that we're against Europe being management, managed in this style that doesn't mean we shouldn't be represented in this parliament. We represent more than 20 percent of citizens at the moment. And Italian citizens have decided to send us here to have our voice heard. However, our voice has been silenced in a way that has never been done before in the European Parliament. I'd like to put another question. Now, I've asked you whether you regret the agreement having joined the EFDD, seeing as you're being sidelined. Now, what about uh, the other small groups, the GUI, etc.? No. no, we don't regret it at all, and I don't really see why we should regret it. On the contrary, we're going to fight to get what we're entitled to, and we're certainly not going to be silenced with these very petty political means. Now, the other question is a bit different. I think that this coalition, this majority, last Monday signed its death knell. Now, if a dissenting voice is not uh, listened to, but if it's excluded, that probably means they're too scared. It clearly means that too many people today in Europe are Eurosceptical. And rather than confronting the problem, they're trying to sweep it under the carpet. 
that's what has happened here. But I think our role is to speak more and more loudly so that we get heard. Could I just add one point? The, the way you cast your question, it sounded as though this was a plot against the EFDD. It is not. It is a plot against all minor parties. In fact, the Greens have suffered as well and are concerned about it, and the ECR itself lost a potential vice chairmanship of a committee as a result of exactly the same activity. So this isn't an anti-EFDD particularly movement. This is an anti-small party and a consolidating the uh, larger parties in a position of control. Peter von Kohl from uh, EU Reporter. Uh, first, a practical uh, remark. You have a sign saying you are Nigel Farage. Uh, there's television. It's transmitted all over, so it could be you. Exactly. But my question is, uh, now you have told how annoyed you are with the uh, practice which you have uh, been uh, uh, shown up to now. What are you going to do about it? One of the things we're going to do, of course, is to appeal to the court of public opinion, to these many millions of people who voted for UKIP in the UK, who voted for the Five Star Movement in Italy, and for other related parties in, in other parts of Europe. What we are also going to do, as David Borelli has rightly said, we are still going to speak up. Uh, we've lost the formal advantage of certain vice uh, chairmanships of committees that we believe we ought to have had, and a vice presidency of the parliament. Um, but, of course, we still have a voice and a vote, and we shall exercise it. So we are making huge progress as a Euro-critical political movement in my country, in Italy, but across Europe as a whole. Uh, and I think these uh, rather grubby devices that the large old parties are using to try and exclude us, uh, they are measures of desperation. In the end, the people will drive the agenda, and we are with the tide of history. May I just have a follow-up? Um, why aren't you just accepting that fact, knowing by that that you will have a tremendous support at the next elections? We are accepting it in the sense that we know we haven't got those appointments that we wanted to get, but we are also trying to draw the attention of the public across Europe to the way things are done in Europe uh, and the profoundly anti-democratic na nature of these institutions. So in a way, our opponents have presented us with an opportunity to make these points. They've come out into the open and said, we don't give a hang about customer practice. We don't care about democratic representation of the people. We are going where we are going, whether you like it or not. That is the authoritarian approach we are facing. And you've made exactly the point that we will get further support from the public as a result of the behavior of the groups who claim that this is a Europe of values based on the rule of law.